welcome to the CHGO Sky podcast brought to you by Points Bet. My name is Janice Scurrio. With me, as always, is Sabria Whitaker. You can follow the show at CHGO underscore Sky. Follow me, if you so choose, at Scuriosa, S C U R I I O S A. Uh, you can follow Sabria at Sabria Whitaker. Um, Anyway, how the heck are you guys? I'm pretty well. Your Chicago Sky are 23 and 7. I think that's pretty cool. Sabria, how the heck are you? I am doing well. I had a great Monday, actually, and I'm excited for this week. I mean, we had, what, four games yesterday? So four games straight of basketball. I'm good. <laughs> A lot of action in the W as things are wrapping up. We've got about roughly two weeks of the regular season left and uh, things are coming down to the wire. Things have been pretty, pretty nuts. Anyway, uh, Sabria, what have you been up to? Like, like, what, what, what have you been uh, doing this past week? Wow, I don't remember. Um, so much has happened. So since the last show, I remember the Liz news breaking, but I can't. That was Monday night, right? Yeah, I, I think. don't think we talked about it. Yeah, No, because we, we talked about what happened um, earlier that day with all of WNBA Twitter in the space. And so mm -hmm. we all thought, okay, you know, something always happens on WNBA Monday. It's over. We're fine. And then at like 11 something at night, <laughs> the news broke um, that Liz Cambage and LA Sparks have agreed to a contract divorce and she is no longer a member of the team. And then Tuesday was... I don't want to talk about Tuesday. I know we're going to have to talk about Tuesday, but I don't really want to talk about Tuesday. We don't have to talk about it that much. We can, we can just like make little references to it, but we don't have to. It, we, we can pretend it never happened. Okay, yes, let's do that. And then Thursday was basketball Thursday, right? A lot of basketball. Just a lot of basketball. But I will say that thanks to CHGO, I did get to go to the double header with the Red Stars and the Fire, and I got my favorite player to autograph my jersey, so adding that to the collection. So yeah, I'm great. How are you? That's wonderful. That's one. I, I'm pretty well. Uh, so I was actually at Tuesday's game. Uh, that Amazing. totally didn't happen. That, that to yeah, because I saw you. I, I, I shouted at yes. you. Yes. And I was like, Sabria. <laughs> and you're, you're probably like, who's this weird weirdo shouting at me? And I was. It was me. It was me. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, besides uh, what happened on the floor, uh, it was a very interesting, interesting game overall that we'll address very shortly. Uh, but probably other than that, uh, on Friday, I was also at the game on Friday, and I actually brought my boyfriend. It was his first WNBA game, and he was so excited to go. And so... Uh, I also think like it's also a great way to grow the game. Like if, if you're a W fan and you know there's someone in your life that you love that's never been to a game before, you need to change that. You need to just go ahead, bring them to Wintrust Arena or your local uh, your local team, whatever that may be. Um, but it'd be better if it was at you know a, a, a Sky game is always better. Uh, so I brought him. And of course, too, I was like, do you have any questions? Like, say, is there anything that you need? Like, do you want me to explain some of the dynamics? <laughs> so I, I basically was telling him all of the minor storylines. I'm like, all right, so Allie Quigley and Courtney Vandersloot are married. They've been teammates for forever. Uh, so they're sort of like a Civil War chess set. They always have to like be together. Uh, so it's like, yeah, you, 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 you can't split them up. So I was kind of giving him the lowdown, like why Candace Parker wasn't playing. Like he, he knew who she was, of course. And uh, the other, at, at, at the very end, at the very end of the game, I was asking, all right, so do you have a favorite player? And like his immediate answer was, was Kalia Copper. He was, I knew yeah. that. Precisely. Yeah. Like, like he, he absolutely just loved how she attacked the basket, how she just basically just go like, like just carves through defenders uh, and, and how incredibly dynamic she is and how fun she is to watch. So uh, essentially uh, we've got ourselves a new fan. Uh, so uh, very proud of Dalton for coming to his first game. I'm going to bring him to more games too. I'm going to get like, uh, um, the next step is I'm going to get him a Jersey as well. So Yes, yeah, so let's do it. And make sure if you get the jersey from Fanatics, you click in my link on Twitter and use the um, Fanatics code that's in there because I'm a Fanatics ambassador. And then 10% of that sale goes to Grow the Game to buy the jerseys and other things that we give away. So, yes. 
Excellent. Excellent. I will have to do that. Um, hopefully, I mean, he better be watching, but if he is not watching, uh, I, I just ruined your surprise. I'm so sorry. Um, but anyway, um, we were going to discuss this at the very end of the pod, uh, but there are only, I think, four uh, Sky Home games left for the rest of the season. Yeah, four games left in Chicago. So uh, you can get your tickets at growthegamew.com. That's another way to support Grow the Game, a great organization doing fantastic things. Uh, but yeah, uh, Sabria, um, uh, the link to buy the tickets is still on your site, I'm assuming, right? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful too. So for those of you listening to us, definitely show up, show out, buy your tickets through Sabria's link. And uh, yeah, a, a portion of that goes to grow the game. So especially if there's someone in your life that you love that has never <laughs> been to a WNBA game, I beseech you, like take them. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time. Yes. I was also I was also hyping up the chicken tenders too. I was like, you got to have the chicken tenders at the at Wintrust Arena. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he was feeling them though. He was feeling the chicken tenders. Yeah. Well. I hope he gets all the chicken tenders. Well, we'll have a postseason. So I don't, he doesn't have to worry about getting them in two weeks like some other teams. And I can't wait to figure out who those teams are. It feels like pre playoffs. I didn't really yeah. know that that was a thing, but it feels like it. It definitely feels like that. Uh, so the Mystics did clinch a playoff spot over the weekend. I believe uh, the, uh, the Storm have also clinched as well. Uh, so we've got, spots being clinched left and right. There are about three spots left uh, yes. in, for the playoffs. So uh, I think the early contenders, in my opinion, I think Dallas has a pretty good shot at it. Um, maybe Minnesota, but I want to know your thoughts. So who, who do you think is did going you re to Did you really just ask me that? Did yeah, you really? Because I feel like you and everybody else should know what I'm going to say. The Sparks, of course. Yeah, the Sparks. I know. Yes, and I'm actually um, <laughs> flying to New York tomorrow Ooh, <laughs> because yeah. they have the back-to-back -back, um, in New York, which is going to be really exciting. And I think we talked about this um, in regards to last season, but the back-to-back is kind of similar to, you know, those games that they kept bunching together. They're actually really exciting, and I think that might have been part of the reason I believe that Mystics game was sold out, the last one that they had. So I'm excited to see um, this back-to-back -back because New York is the reason why L.A. fell out of the playoffs last season. So these are definitely some games to watch. But, I mean, I'm going to go with Minnesota over Dallas. That's gutsy, but... I think it's also gutsy as well, but also to um, uh, besides uh, Dallas um, uh, playing the sky tomorrow, um, there aren't really the, the schedule for them is a little light. So I think uh, I also think Minnesota has a very interesting team as well. I think their upcoming schedule is also not that difficult. Um, but why why do you think uh, Minnesota over Dallas, though, early on? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think necessarily it's going to be Minnesota over Dallas. I just personally want it to be Minnesota over Dallas. Um, I know they're in this weird spot where it's like, do we want to give Seal one last ride into the playoffs or do we want to, you know, get a lottery pick? So I don't know what they're thinking over there. I know they play with a lot of heart. They did just, you know, beat LA. So they might kind of, you know, coming off a win is always kind of a big deal, especially at this late um, in the season. But it's looking like the the Mercury are, what are the odds? Like, what if, because they started down so, so far. Like, what if we end up with a rematch? That would be insane. It's still possible. Anything is possible. I know uh, we'll be chatting with our friends uh, on the Phoenix Mercury podcast in a few weeks. I, I I haven't even like I don't even know how their name is pronounced. Is it P H N X P N P H N X Mercury? It, it doesn't roll <laughs> off the tongue like C H G O. I'm I'm really yes. sorry, uh, but <laughs> yes, and and I know it's like D N V R. That makes me 
Look, I don't want to get us in trouble, but yes, I think CHGO does have the best sounding one. <laughs> I agree. Like, totally no bias here. Because uh, so we have a vowel. Yeah, I think I, that's I, what it is. They don't have vowels. Yeah, there's Phoenix. <laughs> I, in Denver. <laughs> Denver. Uh, absolutely no shade at our siblings. <laughs> Uh, but like we, we, we have, and also we have a word in up there too. They're like the word go, I think very dynamic. It's very energetic. So yeah, C H G O you got to go. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, enough about us, uh, talking about how we think we're better than everyone else. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much this pod though. It's pretty much this pod. Generally. I mean, yes, because we also think the sky is better than everyone else. So, I mean, mm-hmm. that's at least we're true. consistent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And actually, you know what? I'm with you on Minnesota, just mainly because, like, I uh, selfishly uh, definitely want to see more SIL games, uh, especially after uh, the regular season ends. So I don't know. Maybe that's not so selfish. Uh, but of course, too, uh, like you mentioned, this is uh, her final ride, uh, just kind of like uh, the mural in Minneapolis. Uh, Sill's final ride. We definitely want to extend her ride, give her a couple more miles uh, as she's uh, on the bike. But I will say, I, and this is like clearly, clearly I want success for the Sparks, right? I want success for Chicago. However, LA is currently the eighth seed. And um, so Atlanta is right behind them. They're iffy. They have a lot of stuff going on. Um, But I feel like, you know, Phoenix and LA might be doing a little bit of this but if LA remains the A seed and we remain the number one seed I get an LA and Chicago series so I just feel like you know I feel as if that's win-win for you either way like it's essentially yeah absolutely. yeah absolutely like you're going to come out winning either way so I, yeah. I completely understand uh that uh that that point from you but Rebecca uh, said it too in the I think it was like the segment the last game she said that because she's from LA so having her family there and last time she did go pretty crazy um with her first career double double so Sounds like, a and look, and then Candace gets to go back where no longer Derek Fisher. So I just feel like for all of those reasons, everybody should be rooting for the LA and Chicago playoff matchup. That's a good point. Just mainly because that big, like dark Derek Fisher cloud isn't over everyone's head anymore. Uh, so like all of that negative energy is now gone. So we don't have to worry about him anymore. So yeah, not only are we getting our revenge playoff matchup, uh, also to uh, Lexi. Uh, and I think I, oh, I, yeah. I, I wrote about this later on uh, in the show, uh, but did Lexi Brown ever get her ring? Yes, I, 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 I don't know if you went back. I put it next to it in parentheses. Oh. And I was like, yes, she did. She she got it um, before the last game that I think was in L.A. And there's like a video of James giving it to her. And she's like, oh, like it, it was real cute, real cute. But yeah, she finally has her ring, thankfully. Oh, thankfully, yeah, because we were very concerned. We we're like, all right. Um, and I know Lexi was too. Uh, she's very vocal on Twitter. Uh, bless her heart. She's always like, 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 just, like, always talking about, like, where's my ring? I didn't get my ring yet. And of course, we were wondering the same thing. So good for her. Good for her. Um, and Steph but- just got hers, right? Yes, yeah, Steph just got hers. Mm-hmm. Steph just that- got hers. So did they maybe wait until the last game? Because I don't remember when Diamond got hers but she got hers first yes Mm -hmm. diamond got hers first uh because the ring ceremony was uh, the game uh oh no no the ring ceremony i think was the game against the mercury if i remember correctly i i just i I, I thought it was indiana oh yeah it it was indiana Uh, but oh uh, the mercury game was after indiana that's why i'm getting messed up um, but yeah, I, I also do remember um, the uh, the hug heard around the world uh, after during that ceremony, and I'm just like, hmm, okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, watching them um, against Steph was really interesting too. It felt like there might have been, it felt personal. Now, good way, bad way, I don't know, but it definitely felt personal. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I did notice uh, on Friday, it was definitely a, a better shooting game for Steph. Uh, they were even setting her up for some really interesting threes. Uh, she was shooting well. Uh, she looked good on the floor, in my opinion. Uh, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, so, Sabria, have you uh, taken a look at Candace Parker's uh, new Adidas collection, the one that just came out today? I have, and it's been a lot of rumbles about it and whether or not it's sold out or like, so I guess it's in different places, but I have taken a look. I did get some stuff from the last one, but you know, this is around the time where everyone's dropping things and going to start running my pocket. So I have to be very careful. <laughs> yeah. I, d I looked at the, on the Adidas website. It looks like everything was sold out, but they're doing a restock uh, on the fifth, I believe. And I know I saw Kayla Davis tweet about how um, uh, probably on, uh, on the fifth uh, or no, 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 to check the, the Dick's app, Dick's sporting goods, uh, because they also had some stuff in stock as well. Yes. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's a very interesting looking collection. There's a sh short sleeve hoodie that I kind of want. I think I'm going to pick that up. Um, and it did crash the website though. So oh. even if it's not sold out, I did see photos of people saying the website crashed, like the screenshot of it. So good for you, Candace. Yeah, we uh, we also love when Candace Parker just forces uh, Adidas and uh, and Dix uh, to invest in better servers to host their website. We especially love that because the more traffic, um, like it, 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 it essentially creates more hype for this merchandise and basically shows how important. Uh, just the WNBA is overall, uh, just because, yeah, uh, my credit card is definitely aching after all of that. So, <laughs> so speaking of Candace, uh, so she's been out for the last two games uh, with a non COVID illness. Uh, she's questionable uh, for tomorrow's game versus the wings. Uh, so one thing that we've talked about early on on the show is how the sky perform uh, without her. And I think uh, Azure Stevens has certainly uh, stepped up in her role as a starter. Uh, she's put up double figures on Sunday as well as Friday as well. So uh, 12 points, 10 rebounds on Sunday, uh, 12 points on Friday. Uh, she reached 1,000 career points on Friday. And also uh, with Candace Parker out, uh, Z's average 12 points per game, seven rebounds per game, uh, two blocks per game, uh, two, uh, uh, three, uh, I wrote this wrong. But anyway, uh, essentially uh, she's doing very well uh, and kind of uh, has done a really great job in of filling uh, Candace's shoes uh, while uh, she's been out. But uh, anyway, I know uh, you've got some Z opinions. Uh, I know that uh, You've been thinking about her as well. Uh, what, what, what do you attest uh, her performance lately to? I don't remember if I said, well, did I say her for sixth player of the year? Is that what I said? If I, I didn't, that's, that's what it's so. giving. I so, think it, yeah. I mean, I really like it. It's, it's nice that she seems way more confident. Uh, I remember watching like the – the interview that they showed during halftime um, or they spoke to her during halftime. Like at first she wasn't making her threes and she was like, well, every time I shoot a three, I'm confident it's going in whether or not it goes in. And it was a good thing that she didn't let that um, deter her from shooting threes in the second half, because we always could use one of her threes. Like it helps a lot always. and her blocks help a lot. So I'm just really, really, really proud of her and more people know her name. And she's just like, great energy all around so i'm i'm super proud of her and i definitely can't wait to see more of her um as the season goes on and in the playoffs absolutely absolutely so we're all definitely all about uh, talking about all the players uh they, they deserve so much recognition uh, so one thing that I've been seeing on Twitter lately is that uh, there has been a lack of Courtney Vandersloot hype. Uh, and I know she just was named Player of the Week. It was her second award this season. Uh, this past week, uh, the point god averaged 19.5 points per game, 7 rebounds per game, and 10.5 assists per game this just this past week. So uh, this is the second time this season and eighth time in Courtney's 12-year career in which she's received this honor. Uh, and also, too, uh, she currently holds the second-place spot in league assists this season at 6.5 6 per game. 
and also to the all-time assist leaderboard, uh, this lovely graphic uh, by our production team. She is now third all-time. She just pit passed Lindsay Whalen uh, this past weekend. So uh, yeah, uh, I, I absolutely think she's going to capture that two spot sometime soon. Uh, but yeah, with the way she's been rolling lately, uh, she absolutely uh, deserves all this recognition. I, I feel as if just uh, the WNBA social doesn't talk about her enough. Uh, I know uh, James K feels the same way. He's tweeted about her as well. A lot of the Sky Media also feel that same way too. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, how, how do you feel about uh, the media treatment of, of Sloot so far, or at least this season? I think that it's a little weird because overall, I don't really feel like the Sky in general get enough attention compared to everyone else but i think we get a little more because of candace parker obviously but and and ka but even then it's not i don't really see them as much and it's and i know it's because of the way my feed is curated just because i'm in chicago and you know sky town clearly but i don't think they get enough and i think this might be one of those examples where i don't know her team or who she's signed with but I think she might have to do more herself, unfortunately, to get herself out there, which I know probably isn't a focus for her because she gets her check here and then she goes overseas and gets a check. So maybe that's just not something that she wants, but I think it might need to be more like an intentional rollout, if you will, to get kind of the respect she deserves, which is not right. And I wish it wasn't the case, but I think that's my thoughts on how we got here because even before she's not one of those, I just don't feel her as one of those people that wants to be like all out there. So maybe that's just what it is because she's been here for a very long time. And I do think she should be more of a face in the Chicago community, but I don't know why she's not. Yeah, and also I, I agree with you there that I, I feel as if she probably is maybe less extroverted uh, than say a lot of the other faces uh, in the WNBA, uh, let alone uh, Chicago. Uh, so maybe that's also a reason why, uh, but otherwise, um, yeah, at, at least we're paying attention. I, I yeah. feel as if, you know, just as long as we pay attention, that's all we really, that's all that matters in my opinion. Agreed. <laughs> All right. Um, so as opposed to um, as, as, as opposed to what we think, well, actually, no, I, I, I feel as if this aligns with our interests here. Uh, of course, you're listening to this podcast. You love the CHGO Sky podcast and you love CHGO. We don't blame you one bit. So if you'd like to support us, uh, download the points, bet app and use code CHGO when you sign up. If you can do that right now, you get two risk free bets up to two thousand dollars. But that's not it. If you make $50, a $50 or more first time deposit, you'll receive a free CHGO membership that unlocks all of our web content. Uh, we've got Sky articles. Uh, we've got articles about other Chicago sports teams, if that's your thing. Uh, of course, too, uh, we just started Red Stars coverage. Uh, so pretty fantastic stuff there. So you'll receive a free uh, CHGO membership. You'll get a free T-shirt. From of your choice from the CHGO locker. There, of course, is a super awesome CHGO Sky podcast shirt. That's $2,000 in free bets, a free CHGO membership, and a free t-shirt, all for making a $50 first-time deposit at PointsBet. Uh, so if you have any questions, email us at, at points, pointsbet at allchgo.com. We'll help you out. So your home for live in-play betting just got better. So you see an edge in the game you're watching. Is your favorite team prime for a comeback? Don't just watch the game. Bet along with it live. So there's more betting. Lore, lo, mo, lo, uh, I'm mixing my words up. Lot more live markets. I like re or said that in my head twice and I still reverse the words. I don't know why. Uh, and faster live cash outs. So follow along with your bets the moment they hit and stay in the live action all game long. So download the points bet app right now and use promo code CHGO. So what are you waiting for? Uh, it's time to elevate your game right meow. So once the game starts, don't just bet, live your bet life with points bet. So if you or someone you know have a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER for crisis counseling and referral services. We got a comment from Avir. 
A-V-I-R. I hope I said your name right. Uh, so Azure and Rebecca, co-sixth woman of the year. I, I, I can get behind that. I can get behind that. Uh, I think like Rebecca's chances of winning rookie of the year, I feel as if she's probably going to maybe pull up second or third. Although I, I really think her chances are pretty good. I know like a lot of the early articles said that uh, Rebecca was really more of a dark horse candidate. I know um, we, we all hate hearing about the 31 year old rookie and how, yeah, we know, we know how old she is and we know she's a rookie. Yes. We also know that she's fantastic. Uh, but yeah, I can get behind this. What, what do you think, Sabria? I think that this just supports my argument that the team is just such a team that it's hard to give individual awards. Um, Except, like you said, Rookie of the Year. Based on Twitter, there's a lot of maybe confusion about Rookie and whether or not she can be considered a rookie and all that stuff. I don't really know if there's like a president to go off of. Mm -hmm. So probably have to look more into that. But I do think, um, I think she's going to be obviously all rookie team if, like, you know, it's politics. So I think she'll make all rookie um, and first team defense. Those are my predictions for her. But I did say I want it as right for six women of the year. So I agree with that one. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, either way, uh, the more Sky players get recognition, the better, of course. Um, yeah, just mainly because for the most, like mostly everyone has been just playing and like consistently very well throughout the entire season. Um, so let's talk about this week's games. So the most recent one, Sunday, a 95-92 win over the Connecticut Sun on Sunday. Uh, so this one, especially in the fourth quarter, was a little bit of a nail biter. So the Sun came back from a 17 point deficit to lead by three. Uh, but this guy still managed to overcome. Uh, Ka led all players with 27 points. So definitely huge high scoring game for her. It was also the game where Sloot pa uh, passed Lindsey Whalen to be number three on the uh, all time WNBA, and WNBA assist lists. Otherwise, uh, this one went into OT. Uh, this guy are now two and one in OT games. Uh, Sloot recorded a double double in OT with 16 points and 12 assists, which is a season high and was two rebounds away uh, from a triple double. Uh, so uh, other than that, it looks as if this guy's switch definitely flipped in OT. They went on a nine and O run from 150 to uh, eight seconds left uh, in the first overtime. Uh, but otherwise, uh, what were your thoughts on this game? I am so tired of them. Can we please stop giving everybody in Skytown heart attacks at the end of the game because y'all want to play the whole first three quarters? But I will say, now, I said that I was going to die on the hill that we would have won that game if Coach Wade would have gotten one of the most absurd technical fouls I've ever seen. Um, because then, obviously, we would have won by one. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of upset with them recently probably since Tuesday is when I really noticed that even though they're such a team and like I still love the passing I just love the the way they communicate without like the nonverbal communication is very strong with them I think that's one of the reasons why they click so well yeah but they have a problem with taking the good shot instead of the great shot like there are times where I'm like pass it and the person shoots it and it doesn't go in. And there are other times where I'm like, you shoot it and then they pass it and then that pass gets deflected or stolen. So it's just like, obviously it's very different watching on TV or watching as a spectator than being in the game. But I I really think they need to figure that out more because as the season goes on, it's clear that turnovers are becoming one of their biggest problems. And you don't want teams to kind of, because I mean, it, there are a lot of teams. Okay, so Connecticut, um, in case we see them, we have Alyssa Thomas, who is just out here stealing everything, right? Same thing with LA, Brittany Sykes. Absolutely, yeah. So it's like, 
whether you're at the top or the bottom. And then um, Vegas, like on top of the block shots from Asia, who was just oh, Asia oh being absolutely God. insane. I think Chelsea Gray might be top five in steals. And then the other people are Brianna Stewart. And I can't remember, but see, that's what I'm saying. Like that's a Vegas player, an LA Sparks player, a Seattle player, Alyssa Thomas in Connecticut. Like, so you run the risk of that player just watching all the film and just picking it apart because great passes. But the way I look at it is don't let them have a lane to do the bounce pass. And I think that will clog them up in the paint a lot. And they have a problem with, I don't know. I don't know if it's just the coaches are like, this is the plan. This is what we wrote out. This is the play. Do it. But I was watching that Connecticut game. Like, how many times are you all going to run this same play? I love Kai. She gets to the basket phenomenal. Like you said, she led all scores. But there were so many times where I'm like, Kai, there are four people standing in there. Everybody knows you're our finals MVP. They're going to give the ball to you. Do not come in this paint. Didn't was, listen. Uh, and it's just yeah. like, and then there was another one where I th- Allie, maybe, or was it Courtney? It might have been Courtney passed up a three. And I'm like, ma'am, did you forget who you are? Like, I think, I don't know. I don't, maybe it's a confidence thing, like a overconfidence over here, not enough confidence over here. I don't know, but they need to figure it out. But it's, it's great that we can say this and they're still at the top. So I'm not too, too, too worried, right. but I'm just looking ahead they need to figure it out yeah that that is a good point because i mean uh like like becky hammond said in the post game conference on tuesday uh she admitted like you have to do a lot to knock this team out uh and so she attributed to it like you know it might have been our defense it might have been their shooting but uh yeah uh she admitted that the aces definitely had to like go all out in order to stop the sky and i did notice at one point in that game uh ka had like four defenders on her and i'm just like there there, there is no way she's going to either sh- take a good shot or move the ball around when obviously you know ka is going to be the recipient of that ball well, on the other hand, I do remember that Kelsey Plum said, you know, I was the benefic- beneficiary of plenty of good looks. I was able to get so many shots in. And uh, look what happened. Just in the first two minutes, she landed uh, three threes in two minutes. That, that, that's ridiculous. She was like, I mean, I mean, she's a, a, an absolutely great player, but, you know, that looks poorly upon uh, your defense and it also looks poorly upon, you know, your ability to uh, maintain uh, the opposing offense uh, when you let a team just do that to you. And you want to know what I think is that, like the reason for that is Rebecca is not on the floor. I think that Rebecca should be like the sky defense captain and she should be running it. And possibly they look to her. Okay. If Bex doing her thing, that motivates me. I mean, I really, Candace probably would be the next best defender in my eyes, but that's also partially because, you know, height and, but just how long she's been in the game, she's great at anticipating things. But I think defense gets better whenever Rebecca Gardner is on the floor. And because she comes off the bench, teams might just know, okay, let's do it when Beck's not on the floor. And that's what happened. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Coach Wade even admitted too. uh, he's like, yeah, uh, Rebecca came in a little too late. Maybe I should have put her in there a little earlier. Uh, He said that's on me. Uh, So I agree that maybe if Rebecca was, you know, in in the first quarter, uh, I think it was like 33 points. Uh, It was a telltale 33 point point first quarter uh so like that that's insurmountable like you're not going to win many ball games when you just allow the team to score that many points in the first quarter i mean they did though against vegas so that's that's why i i keep saying i don't want to see vegas and it's not that i'm not confident but it's just like they're like fraternal twins or something yeah. and so like we come back from a deficit and then the next game we can't and it's just like it's i feel like every body saying the same thing like for some reason they're not really addressing the issue and they don't really know what it is to beat the team I I think in this game I don't think Vegas won it I think we lost it in the same way when we came back from such a large deficit I don't 
I can't say we didn't win that game. I think it was like a draw. Like we kind of won that game, but they really lost that game. So it's just like, this is going to be dangerous if we end up meeting because it's really not much the other team can do. You just have to hope that the other team is not having a good day and take advantage of it. And that's really the only way you're going to win. Absolutely. And it was just a terrible shooting game for the sky too. I mean, the aces defense also wasn't playing around. Uh, they, they really managed to keep the sky out of the paint. Well, uh, they, they definitely forced some really awkward threes. And a lot of it was what you mentioned earlier, where a lot of the times it's either like, like you're either just like passing the ball uh, to someone who can't get a good look, or you're just like not taking the the shot yourself. Um, but they eventually finished at 40%, but they also shot 14% from the field by the end of the first quarter. So that kind of goes to show you that, yeah, a lot of it was a uh, very timid. Uh, timid was the word that coach Wade used. And I, I agree. I agree too. I, I honestly think that game was lost uh, by the end of that first quarter. Um, even though uh, they, they did mention that the other three quarters, uh, the Aces defense did kind of falter just a little bit. But I mean, honestly, uh, at that point, they really didn't need to do much. Uh, it, it was just that bad. Yeah, I was sitting there. Um, I was just like, <sighs> but it was kind of OK. So I did have on a, a Vegas inspired outfit. I saw so. I saw <laughs> I mean, you had to get your fit off. I mean, I totally I had get to it. get my fit off. I was like, so yeah, it was like you look good too. You looked good. Oh, thank you. So like I wasn't being like a fair weather fan at all. Like it was clear that I was rooting for them, but it was like less <laughs> embarrassing during that first time because people probably was like, Oh, she's here for Vegas anyway. I wasn't the oh. So when I saw you, I was sitting courtside um at the time in my friend's seat, and <clears throat> I'm sitting there minding my business. And they're doing the shoot around stuff and Candace's ball rolls to me and I'm just sitting here like, do what do I do? Like, does she want me to touch it? Does she want to come get it? Like I panicked, picked it up and I threw it to her and she didn't say a word. And I was like, oh, I am sitting here in Vegas stuff on oh, my bed. But I wasn't rooting for them. But I thought that was really, really, really funny. Because she was, like, super locked in. Like, <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I would have done the same, too. Uh, on the other hand, I would have been like, oh, like, like, oh shit, what do I do? do? Do do I just, like, hand it to her? Do I just be like, uh... Just, like, yeah, like, I okay, tossed it to her. Coming down and, on the ball. and this isn't my first time... I don't, I feel like this season, I'm going to start counting, but I feel like this season I've probably been able to get the ball and throw it to someone like three or four times. And when it's a sky game, it's almost always Candace. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Like, do, you, do you think just like maybe um, she's just like just doing the most, like say around, like during shoot arounds and she's just lobbing the ball wherever? Well, every other time it's been during the game, which oh, makes sense game. because okay. she's the one that does the pass. Mm. So I'm like, that makes sense. But this time it was like, whew, super, super. She was really, really, really focused. So I know that that loss, um, I, I don't want to say that it affected her, but I hope they take it and carry it, but in a good way. Not that it gets in their minds, but that they don't want to do that again. And hopefully she's feeling better. Fortunately, we're able to hold it down without her, but looking forward to when she's able to come back. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think also to the fact that uh, they're still playing pretty well without her too. So if you remember last season, uh, she was out for five or six games, I believe, and they lost every single one of those games. Uh, so I think that's definitely a testament to uh, how much better everyone's playing. I mean, it, it is definitely a different team. Uh, there, there are definitely some new variables thrown into the mix, but otherwise, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a good sign that they, they could play without her. Um, they can also uh, play well uh, without Courtney Vandersloot as well. Because, uh, like, one, one thing that I absolutely love watching is uh, Sloot and, and Candace playing together. Like, but they have such, like, good floor chemistry they act as if they've been playing together for years um but yeah other than that uh, to have those two uh, key pieces or even just having one of those pieces missing and still have like seeing the sky play you know 
pretty acceptable basketball. And I say acceptable just mainly because, I mean, like the, the loss could have been much worse to the Aces. They, they, they definitely just could have been mopped. Um, but I think they cut the lead down to, I think, seven points at one time. And it definitely could have been much worse. I think a 10 point loss, it, it actually might've been uh, the worst loss since uh, opening night. Uh, Cause I think that game against the Sparks was also kind of a similar deficit. I don't remember the score exactly. I know you're smiling cause I mentioned the Sparks. Um, and I know uh, uh, Brittany also played very well in that game too. So I, I definitely know why you're smiling there. Um, and yeah, I, I know, I remember after the game, uh, we were all at Williams Inn and I saw like Brittany walk in, like I almost was like, Brittany, why'd you hurt us so much? <laughs> why'd you do that to us, Brittany? <laughs> yeah, and so like the same thing with how Azaree didn't let um, her threes that weren't falling because she went through a, a freeze without hitting any threes. Um, yeah. The Sparks game, I always mess up my days yesterday. Sparks game yesterday, Brittany was zero from 10 in the first half. <laughs> and I was a little worried. And it's well, like, you know. From the field or, or just for like, was she attempting a bunch of threes? From everywhere. Like oh, dang, she, okay. she had two points because she got fouled and she made both of her free throws. But she was trying, like she could not buy a bucket. Truly, like if she went on her phone, insufficient funds would have just popped up because she literally couldn't buy anything. And then um, she comes out after halftime. And do you know she went on a 9-0 run by herself and got 13, <clears throat> 13 points in the uh, fourth quarter? Whoa. So, yes. So we have to be able to figure out who that is on the sky when stuff isn't working like when stuff isn't working i think we take too long to adjust yeah and i know that there are some people who aren't getting as many minutes as people want and it's just like we got to be more risky like i get it we it's not you know if it's not broke don't fix it totally. but i rather us figure out those rotations and those kind of like messy ish situations now than in the playoffs because we're good like obviously it'll affect our seating and i want us to continue to be the number one seed but we're in we don't have to win yeah. i'd rather you do the work now to figure out what's gonna be the best option to get another championship that's a good point that's a good point and so uh someone that I, we haven't really seen uh rotate in as much and today is actually her birthday uh dana evans so uh, I know like her first couple of games, uh, she's just been or, or, or she was shooting very well, just playing very well too, uh, just uh, clicking on defense and then letting the offense just follow through. Uh, but she really hasn't been getting uh, that many minutes lately. And I'm thinking if maybe that's uh, just a little bit more of um, uh, just Coach Wade uh, playing other, uh, I, I guess maybe playing like bigger players in favor of her. I don't know if, you know, that's the cause of it, but yeah, I'm noticing that she's just not getting minutes. Yeah. And it feels like when she comes in, she might do something that gets her put back on the bench quickly, but it's like, she, she's not warmed up. Like if you keep sitting her for these long periods of times, so many games, it's like at that point we can only expect her to do so much and that's why I'm like let's get people ready and in the rotation used to it building the endurance conditioning all of that and let them figure it out like where's the spot on the floor like every to me every game is obviously practice right yeah. you figure out what works and what doesn't work but the more you sit someone on the bench the less likely they're able to figure out what really works best for them so then when they come in the game and they do they make a silly mistake and then coach is like all right come back out it's like that sucks yeah, of course. And of course, you know, you're going to make silly mistakes when, you know, you don't get minutes. Uh, it's, it's almost like a chicken and egg situation. It's, all, it's also like, say, um, is this player just 
uh, not really doing too much on the floor because, you know, she's not playing enough or is she not playing enough because, you know, she does or doesn't do much on the floor. So at this point, though, I mean, I, I think the sky definitely had that safety net where they can rotate players out and, yeah, not really have to worry too much about winning. I mean, like winning still enjoyable. Like I, I still like want to see the sky mop the final games uh, mm -hmm. before the regular season starts. But yeah, th like you're right. This is absolutely the time to experiment with rotations and kind of see what works and what doesn't. And of course, too, we have to also account for uh, injuries, uh, knock on wood. I mean, I hope this late in the season, everyone stays healthy. Everyone stays uh, warmed up and fine. Uh, but also, too, we really have to account for uh, the unexpected to happen. Right. And so that you want those players to be ready so that they're not like a deer caught in headlights when if their number is called. But also you want to start really prioritizing low management when we talk about the next few matchups. So we have Dallas. We know that game is going to be physical. I feel mm -hmm. like whenever they play, the refs are just like fight. Um, Mystics, I mean, they're it's a lot with that game, right? Like it's a, it's kind of a little personal. So I don't really know. I really don't know what to expect. And then Connecticut, I feel like if it was ever unfinished business before it's Connecticut. So I don't Definitely. really expect them to take anything lightly. Um, and then you have the storm. I don't really know. Mm. Mm. And then you have the aces who obviously right now they're one and two. So they're going to battle it out. And that's also a personal unfinished business revenge type thing. And then the Mercury who are going to be fighting for their seat as well. So it's like, we don't have Indiana anymore, right? Like we don't have anybody who's not going to be in the playoffs. So right. I just want to make sure that our starters and like our key pieces are rested, but ready. And I mm -hmm. think he needs to rotate more right now to make sure that happens. Absolutely. Uh, one thing I want to point out that in the game on Friday versus the Liberty, uh, the Liberty had 30 bench points. Sky bench had 14. So uh, the, the, the one thing that we've been harping about all all season is that how like just strong and long this the sky bench is mm -hmm. and so uh yeah I, I i feel as if especially when i was watching the game i had no doubt that the sky were going to overtake the liberty eventually it, it was very tense it was very back and forth um but especially then uh just rotating those players out and yeah like you like you said like load management really just needs to be handled now uh before before it's too late um, yep. In that game, there were 16 lead changes and nine ties. Uh, so that goes to show you that maybe this guy should have been handling ha handing out blood pressure monitors the entire time, or at least uh, offering low sodium chicken tenders for those <laughs> of us that are watching their blood pressure. Um, but but yeah, it, it definitely was not a boring game at all. Uh, definitely, yeah, the Liberty managed to keep uh, Sky fans on their toes, myself included. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, it's, it, it was a really great week for the Sky, uh, minus Tuesday. I know we said at the very beginning of the podcast we weren't going to talk about Tuesday, but here we, we, we like talked a lot about Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, we had to talk about it. So the, the day before, um, there was a space that was talking about just the commissioner's cup and um john davis who covers la made some great points and he said as people are getting ready or teams are getting ready for the playoffs you don't want to give them too much film like you don't want to keep giving them the recipe right. and he felt like the game really didn't matter so it should have been bench versus bench i wish that had happened to one deal with low management but i feel so bad for vegas's bench like i really hate that like you said do they not have a bench or do we just never get to see the bench because if you like yeah. i don't know how you as a gm can say we don't have a bench you pick them like why are they there 
Exactly. Like exactly. you, okay. you knew what you were putting together. So I think for any team to not have a bench is like unacceptable and embarrassing. But I really want them to be able to get more playing time because we talk about expansion. Yeah, that's nice. We talk about adding roster spots. Yeah, that's nice. But the problem, and even with getting picked up once you're waived, it's like, what is the coach supposed to go on? Your college highlights? Like, they want to know how you are going to play in the league. And because we don't have, like, a, a summer league or a combine where people can figure that out, yeah. they, it's based on what you do in the league. And personally, I feel like that's why Natasha Mack is not playing this season. There's no re- – L.A. should call her, and I'm not just saying that, but it's like – you you lost Liz Cambage, 6'9". You do have Olivia Nelson Adoto, a.k.a. Oh no, But she's just one per- Like, you have Shanae, yes. You have NECA, but Shanae and NECA have other roles. You need somebody who can just catch it up high and put it in the basket. You right. need somebody. And, you know, their interim coach said there's no magic player that you can just find for the next two weeks. Okay, but if you make it into the postseason, maybe that magic player could have the two weeks to figure out how to gel with the team and help you later down the line. Because I can't think of two consecutive games where they've even had the same roster because it's like the, the players are playing like tag with being out and not with the team and playing. And it's just like, I don't think that's smart, but that's why I'm saying like, I wish that they had more opportunity because I don't see that majority of that bench, if any of them coming back next season, but where can they go? Mm, Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I mean, just watching a lot of the early sky games, it was pretty apparent that, yeah, um, this may not be true for every team, but chemistry was definitely a huge issue, uh, issue where it's sort of like, yeah, we have to be under the impression that a lot of these players have played with each other, that they like each other at least, that that you know they have that nonverbal communication going. And I think that's something that someone like Courtney Vandersloot has definitely excelled at. Like I can definitely just, even from where I was sitting, I, I saw her little hand motions and trying to put everyone in their place and making sure that the play was set up correctly. She's really good at that. She's really good at setting up plays um but yeah i think especially uh with a bench like the aces it's like yeah um uh yeah well i mean i i definitely have kind of harped on them before for not having much of a bench and it's yeah but you talk about chemistry and the funny thing is i love vegas's chemistry off the court like yeah Every week they they like they dropped another video and I love and my favorite part about the videos that they dropped um like a yesterday maybe of them singing like Icebox by Amarion you could see <laughs> in one of the stories you see a hand like you see a, a jacket like a hoodie type material and you see glasses and you see a hand and they're recording and I was like is that Becky Becky. And then I went on, I think, Kelsey Plum's Instagram, and you see Becky holding, like, two phones like this, like, just in the shenanigans. I love that. I really love that. And it's genuine. It's not a scheduled outing. Like, a lot of teams have scheduled outings for, you know, for players to bond. But I really love their chemistry off the court. And the funny thing is, I think on the court, Chicago has more chemistry, but I don't think all of Chicago can do what they do like I don't see like I'm sure there are players obviously we have a whole married couple but obviously some players spend more time with the other but if I had to bet on like a game show based on like chemistry and do you know your teammate I'm going with the aces every time oh, so it's just it's absolutely. funny to see how off chem- like off court chemistry and on court chemistry are truly not the same and it's yeah. like a battle of of which two and I love that Oh, absolutely. Especially in that post-game conference on Tuesday. Uh, so just uh, Asia, uh, Chelsea, and Kelsey. I, I can tell that they all love each other very much. I can tell that like even uh, th- there was a little bit of uh, Ch- Chelsea Gray especially had this moment of vulnerability where she's just like, you know, I just lost someone near near and dear to me. Um, the last couple of weeks have been really hard, uh, but my teammates have always had my back. 
And like, I, I could definitely tell, like she almost was like keeping herself from crying and just Asia and Kelsey, like right, like right by her side. Uh, they they were like, yeah, like, like we got you. Like I, I could definitely tell that the bond between the players is like absolutely strong. Uh, but yeah, they were able to joke around. They were able to just like, yeah, just be themselves. Um, I know uh, Becky's son, uh, I think his name is Caden, uh, also stuck around for the press conference too. And yes. I thought that was really adorable. Adorable. And, yeah, um, he he was on uh, Kelsey's lap the entire time, and he just looked like he was just happy to be there. And um, yeah, I, I I I really just just even as a fan, like I I envy the friendships that they have. Yes, like it's it's cute. Like I'm rooting for them off the court. Like I love it. I think they win best vibes, best content. I guess hands down. Um, but I mean, at least we do kind of have a version of that, I think, in Candace and Kai with the clip that's going around where Kai was asked about Asia getting six blocks and how it is oh, playing against her. And she's like, huh? Good. And then Candace says, you know, repeats it and she's like, good. <laughs> and then Candace just starts laughing and it's just like, I, I see that. Like mentor Minty, that's cute. But I think if they can jail more off the court, maybe the next couple weeks interested to see how that affects us. Well, absolutely. And I think that's definitely going to uh, work into uh, on-court chemistry as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, we still have to do, well, we have to talk about court of law uh, because the topic that you brought up is super interesting. So we talked a little bit ab about this at the top of the show. Uh, the social media reactions to Neko Gumake's retaliation against the Minnesota Lynx. So uh, I was just watching the video shortly before we jumped on the call. Uh, so there was a very physical play uh, where uh, someone on the Minnesota Lynx, I can't remember who, uh, you'll probably know, Sabria. Yeah, Jessica Shepard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, it was very obvious that uh, NECA kind of like took a, a swipe uh, and then two swipes, two, two swipes. swipes. The first and, and, swipe was okay. like when... And a foul wasn't called. Yeah. On either one. And, and so she kind of just like, some people say it was a shove. Some people say like she hit her. But I mean, like, we see that all the time with players like pulling on a jersey. I'm going to pull on your jersey. I'm going to try and get in front of you. I'm going to try and get in front of you. Like, I mean, it's like tit for tat stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I was shocked because I'd never seen NECA like that. Like, most people know NECA is very calm, cool, collective, level headed, yeah. um, a leader that everyone looks up to. But she has been getting completely clobbered just recently. And the refs, like I have been saying, the refs have not been protecting these players. Speaking of which, Kelsey Mitchell for the Indiana Fever is now out with a season-ending injury. And it's just like the refs are not helping. And you have someone getting hit in the face. How many people have gone into concussion protocol this season? Like, we want to protect people's faces. I know Sophie Cunningham, I think, had like a black eye like a week ago. And it's just like protect the players. And she didn't feel protected. So, she hit her or pushed her back. I'm not mad at it. I'm like, go NECA. And you see um, Chanae in the background, like talking to her. I'm like, okay, I see that, right? I love sister having, little yeah. sister having big sister's back. Yeah. And I thought it was just that. Like, it was just like, wow, she really slapped her twice. You can see it. Um, NECA was fed up. And it's NECA getting out of character. And I thought that's all it was until I got on Twitter and I'm seeing think pieces about how she should be suspended. And then I see Rebecca Lobo talking about Flaker her son, two. a Flaker 2 wasn't called. Like, ma'am, do you read the rules? Do you know what a flagrant, like the definition is for a flagrant 2? It has to be excessive. Flagrant 1 yeah, is unnecessary yeah, yeah. contact, right? Was, right. was NECA's you know, push or hit in retaliation to being slapped in the face twice unnecessary? Yes. Was it excessive? No. Like, come on. It was just like a little tap to like, and it was lower than the neck. I think one of the rules is like, if it's a face or above the neck, it's like an automatic flagrant something. But that yeah. may be flagrant too, but that wasn't what happened here. So it was just like, she's allowed to show emotion too. And I just feel like so many people talk about, oh, um, Sophie is not to be messed with. The other day, Kennedy Carter had the ball. She had just scored on her. She hands Sophie the ball. Sophie catches the ball and then throws it at Kennedy. They both got teched up. And we talk about Diana being feisty. Don't poke the bear. 
um, in Marina. Marina Mabry gets away with a lot of stuff in Dallas. Those three yes, women have yeah. something in common they, where they have actually really, you know, thrown things or kicked people or just done like a lot, a lot of physical things that were off the ball, just like what happened with NECA. And okay. it's interesting that only she has been called for a flagrant two. When, when wanna... still got kicked, right? Yeah. I didn't see the saying. I didn't see them saying anything about DT. Yeah, and I also want to point out that uh, Ka also got a flagrant on Friday as well. Uh, and I saw the video replay. Uh, basically, Ka's entire forearm came into contact uh, with uh, someone's chest. I can't remember who. And like immediately after, like the contact was made, Ka was like, "My bad." Like I, I, I saw her like mouthing that, and I'm just like, uh, "Yeah, they upgraded it to a flagrant right after." Uh, that call was made. But yeah, interesting there. Um, I, I think a lot like what you said, a lot of these refs don't protect certain players. And it's very interesting, like, say, what players get certain reactions and which don't. Uh, but anyway, we do have to wrap up our show. But anyway, what is your ruling on, uh, I guess, uh, social media? Like, Do you hold them in contempt for yes. unfairly going after Neko Gumake? Yes, absolutely. Unnecessary um, I don't know. Unnecessary something. I'll figure <laughs> out what word I want to use, but it was unnecessary and they didn't need to do it. Absolutely. I agree. Uh, so anyway, that's our show for today. Uh, so like uh, I mentioned before, there are only six regular season games left for left in Chicago. Uh, get your tickets via growthegamew.com. Uh, I will be at the game tomorrow. Sabria, I'm assuming you'll, you'll be there as well. I'll be in New York. Oh, that's right. Duh. All right. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be New Yorking it up. I'm going to be at the game. Um, so anyway, uh, tomorrow's game versus the Wings, a tip off at Wintrust Arena is at 8 p.m. Central. 8 p.m. Strange start time. but Very bit. strange, but I'm appreciative of it because that means I will be able to watch it because there's, what, four or five games tomorrow, like three of them overlap at the same time. So I saw that time and I was like, perfect. I can watch it after the game. Perfect. Perfect. Anyway, uh, that is our show for today. Follow us at chgo underscore sky. Uh, other than that, we'll see you next week. Peace out.